But the Lord tells you very specific. Now just think about the uh, leadership roles in the church. You understand? He said, it's a great mystery, but I talk in regards to the church. A bishop should be the husband of one wife. The deacon should be this and that. You know, even when the elect lady teach a woman how to reverence her husband, teach her how to take care of home. Home. Why is home so important in the eyes of the Lord? Ask yourself that question. Because it keeps you from the evils out here. You know, homebodies are looked down upon in this world. People who don't really want to go nowhere. They look down. Because you go on Facebook, you see everybody else. You see this family going on vacation. You see this family going out to eat. You're like, man, the devil comes in. Your wife don't never want to go nowhere with you. Your husband don't never want to go nowhere with you. But let me tell you something, people. That's a great deception. If your husband want to enjoy being home with you, you better take it and run with it. You better take it and run with it. That doesn't mean they don't love you. They may love you more than you think by trying to keep you from the world. Not hide you, but keep you from the evil thereof. But the world doesn't look at it that way. The world looks at things differently from biblical knowledge. The world teaches this way. The Bible teaches that way. That's why the Bible said you would know them by their fruits. It's a difference between true gospel and worldly gospel. You can't combine the two. You can't teach the lust of the world and the Bible at the same time. You can't. It's not designed to do that. You can't teach grace and mercy without teaching wrath and vengeance. Let's go back to David's prayer life. Have you seen David's prayer life? I'm going to give people a mission today. I'm going to give you a mission. If you're at the sound of my voice, I'm going to give you a mission today. I want you to open your Bible and start reading Psalms. And you got to read all of it in one day. Just read a little bit here and there. And just keep reading Psalms. And keep reading Psalms. And keep reading Psalms. And then when you get finished with Psalms, start reading Proverbs. And start reading Proverbs. And start reading Proverbs. And then when you get finished with Proverbs, read Ecclesiastes. Read Ecclesiastes and read Ecclesiastes. And then when you're finished with that, read the words and read in the New Testament. I'm trying to tell you something. Friendship with this world is enmity with God. I always go back to the temptation of Christ. If you don't go back to anything, just really pay attention to what he tried to tempt Christ with. He tried to tempt Christ with worldly riches and worldly fame and worldly idol star power. He tried to tempt him to commit suicide. He tried to tempt him to show his power by turning a stone into bread. And Jesus said it. Man should not live by bread alone. I need that word too. So that tells you, eat the word. And eat some bread. But you ain't got to prove nothing to anybody. You ain't got to prove the fact that you are a follower of Christ to any soul. Because God knows who he is, he is. And the devil tried to get him to throw himself off a cliff. The, the devil tried to get people to throw themselves off cliffs all the time. Go places where you don't go to try to get you to kill yourself. It's fun over here. He tried to get people to commit suicide. He loves that. He tried to get people to commit murders. He loves that. And then, if all else fails, hey, 
you bow down and worship me, I give you the world. And that's the one that a lot of people, it's kind of weird, the third temptation lines up with the third sow in the seed. The cares of the world, the seedfulness of riches. The sow in the seed, temptation of Christ, the seedfulness of riches. Kind of go hand in hand, it choked the word up. You know, a lot of ways God compelled me to teach, I don't even understand it myself, but I do understand it. And all these years when I was trying to prep myself to be what God called me to be, and I branched from one way to another way. But I'm leading to this way. I understand. You know, but God says in the last days, he said it's in his book of the prophets, he's going to replace the, the normal pastors and the normal preachers and the normal prophets and the normal teachers with better. I'm trying to tell you something. God is trying to prep you to be a replacement for somebody else. Not be like them. He's prepping you to be a replacement for somebody else else he finna step you up but you gotta step away did you hear what I said he's trying to prep you up but you gotta step away you gotta step away from the world and step away and step into your anointing step into Christ cause he has a plan for you and every plan that involves God involves his kingdom and his will that's one thing you got to realize when, when these preachers and these black, God is going to step you into your destiny and step into you and your dreams. Let me change that a little bit. God can try to step you into his dreams and his destiny and his truth and his ways and his wills. It's not about what you want. No. Us as followers of Christ is about what God wants. And God wants to deliver your soul. He wants to save your soul. And it's more than just saying, I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. It involves taking up your cross on the daily and following after him. You see, a lot of people don't understand that the, the apostles set the groundwork for what we are able to do now. A lot of the things that they did, we probably will never do. But we still got work to do. They were important to the Lord. They, we all are important to him, but he always talk about his 12. And that's cool. They took a hold of Jesus when thousands left. Yes. Glory be to God that God created the apostles. And they set the groundwork for me and for you to go out here and do a ministry. To know how to walk worthily. That's what the New Testament is really all about. But if you can see how to walk worthily and make a few mistakes through the Old Testament too. That doesn't mean keep doing the same thing over and over again. You see in, in Psalms, what I just read in Psalms 38, he was talking about science chastisement. He was like, Lord, I know I messed up, but please come back and heal me. Help me, Lord Jesus. I know I made a mistake. Come on, Lord. You see, David went through some hard times. And you're going to go through some hard times. But during those hard times, you go in your bathroom, or you go on your back porch, or you get in your car, and you call upon the Lord. And you start running to that ball. You start running to that friend. You start running to those people that's going to lead you right back to the world instead of to Christ. It's time for you to start running to Christ instead of running to the world. Oh, I'm sad. Let me run to the restaurant. Run to the Lord where he'll give you all the things the restaurant cooks for your house. <laughs> you, you understand, people. 
your meal will be better than any meal that a restaurant ever made for you. I was watching a, uh, a cooking show not too long ago. How the deceitfulness of riches and food is just ridiculous. It's a, a burger over there in Vegas. They call it a whale burger. This burger has gold in it. Gold on the bacon. Gold on the bun. So you eating gold. You see, the world is so crazy. That then it's fool you to trick you to eating things that ain't even supposed to be ingested. Gold. And people go and spend a hundred dollars for this burger. They got gold in it. Gold. You eat gold. Look, I'm eating gold. It's called a whale burger. Got two pieces of meat, cheese, some green stuff. A fried lobster tail on it. Sounds great. But guess what? A hundred dollars. Woo! But you know what? The world wants you to get more and more money so you can go buy that whale burger. <laughs> the world wants you to buy that whale burger. It wants you to go out there and visit Vegas and get a whale burger so you can say you ate a whale burger and then post it on Facebook. Look, I got a hundred dollar burger right here. I mean, there's all these poor people in the land. Can't even afford a dollar burger. You understand, like, enlightenment is way different from most people, what most people think. The devil teaches you abundance. It's how to show that you love God. It's so God's grace and mercy. And so God's love for you. Remember the temptation of Christ. Christ is telling you not to worry about none of this trash. Yeah, he know you got to live here, but he's telling you to be watchful. He's telling you, he's not telling you to go out here and overindulge in this stuff. And I have no problem with, I don't think it's wrong with somebody to go out and go on a vacation sometimes, but don't spend your whole life vacationing. Because you're going to vacation so long, and you're going to party so long, that you're going to forget about it. Christ. God is here to balance you out. I believe everyone is, once in a while, it's good to treat yourself. But don't over-treat yourself. I'm just being real with you. The way I'm talking, may not, may not, you may not agree with. But I'm trying to tell you something. You got a house. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. And everybody that's calling you to try to draw you away from your house and lead you away from home, you better question them. You better question them. You better question who they work for. Because God is building us up a spiritual house. Go back to the binding of the strong man in his house. Once you kick him out, he wants back in your house. Because you get back in your house, that demon gets back in your house and can draw you away from it. That's what he wants. He wants to draw you away from Christ. And home is important. Family is important in the eyes of the Lord. He just told you. He didn't even say husband and wife would be against each other. He said mother-in-law against father, daughter-in-law. He seeks to think about all the people outside of your home. Friends. Neighbors. <laughs> Son, daughter, because once your kids get a certain age, it's time for them to get their own. But your house, he's kind of telling you what's going to come against your house. Family members, friends, neighbors are going to come against your house. And in David's case, sons, close friends came up against his house. You got to really be careful out here, people. God is trying to build you up. Be more like Noah. Be more like Lot. Lot lived in a, a horrible place, but he wasn't a horrible person. And God saw that and God saved him. Really meditate on that, what I just told you. He chose Lot for a reason. And he chose you for a reason also. Have a blessed day.